Hi, my name is Selena DeVore. I'm with Emergency Response Training. We're a small company here in Frederick that teaches wilderness first aid, uh, CPR and first aid, and kids survival and orienteering classes. I'm really excited to be partnering with the Frederick County Library System to present a um, just a small little video about how to be prepared when going out into the woods um, to make sure that you're safe and the people with you are safe. During COVID, we learned that um, the outdoors was probably one of the, the only safe places that we could go to get out and kind of get back to nature. Um, but a lot of people haven't really been outdoors before. So this is a new experience for them. We love that people are getting outdoors and we wanna make sure that when you go outdoors that you're doing it in a safe manner. So one of the things that we encourage you to do is to carry the 10 essentials. Um, here's my 10 essentials uh, poster here. And I use this poster for my kids survival classes. Um, and I thought that it would be a great way to kind of help you see, um, you know, what I'm talking about. And one of the first things that the kids say to me is, Miss Felina, there's way more than 10 things on there. And yes, there are more than 10 things. So instead of considering the 10 essentials, we're going to call it the 10 essential systems. So with the 10 essential systems, we have 10 groupings of things that you should be carrying with you when you go out. I do something called adventure racing. And so I may be out during a race for anywhere from six to eight hours. And I'm always carrying these things with me. Obviously six to eight hours is a long time to be out. You don't wanna carry any extra weight that you don't need to, but the essentials part, that's what makes it necessary to carry. So, you know, this is not stuff that you're going to use every day. Hopefully you'll never need a lot of it. But it's one of those things that if you do need it, you need it. Um, and it will help uh, keep, you, keep you safe. Even when I'm training for my adventure races, um, I spend a lot of time, I'm outside uh, two to three times a week, hiking, biking, paddling. Um, you know, and a lot of times I'm by myself and it doesn't make a difference if I'm only going out for 45 minutes or five hours. I'm carrying this stuff with me. So let's get started. Let's talk about the 10 essential systems. The first thing that, and, and I'm really not going in any particular order. Um, one of the things that you wanna always carry is navigation. So as you can see up here, we have our navigation. And so navigation is your map and compass, um, as well as maybe a GPS unit. So maps where are we going to get the maps from i'm telling you the internet just is a great source of information go to the website that you're going uh, of the place that you're going to and a lot of times they will have maps that you can download for free don't expect that when you get to the park that there's going to be some available because a lot of times um you know it's just the kiosk or it's empty um one of the great things that you can do, and I do recommend, is take a picture of the map. Because I can't tell you how many times that I've been out on the trail and realized that A, I forgot the map, or it fell out of my pack somewhere. So if you take a picture of the map, you at least have a backup. Um, and of course, your compass. So you don't need a, a fancy compass. I don't recommend the little button compasses as your you know, your primary compass, because those are not very effective. Um, so you do want to have a compass with a nice base plate. You can pick them up for $5 and they work just fine. Doesn't do you any good though, if you don't know how to use it. We have lots of opportunities in this area for you to learn how to use a map and compass. Um, and all you just need to do is Google, you know, how to use a map and compass. There's great YouTube videos also that can help you to, to use them. Um, and then if you wanna do some in-person events, we have the Quantico Orienteering Club um, and REI also offers classes on how to use a map and compass. So there are lots of opportunities for you to learn just the basic of navigation, you know, know how to, to do that. And that'll help keep you safe out on the trail. Another thing that, that I like and that I have up here is a GPS system. So, 
I've been hiking long enough that, you know, I had my little handheld Garmin GPS system when I went out hiking, and those are a little obsolete now. But now we do have some great apps that you can put, download onto your phone that um, even when you don't have internet service, will track you, show you the, the trail that you're on. Um, I hike in a lot of places where I don't have cell service, where the trails are not really well maintained or, um, or even marked at all. And I've been able to use a combination of my map and compass, guidebooks, and my phone, which then shows me where I am on the map. Um, and that can be really helpful. So, you know, look at a couple of different apps, see if they work offline, and, as, and especially if they work offline, those are gonna be really good, especially if you get yourself into a sticky situation and can't figure out where you are. Okay, so that covers our first system navigation. Next is sun protection. So, you know, it's, it's very important, even in the winter, you know, a lot of times we think about sun protection in the summer, but you really need to be using sunscreen all year round. Um, and, you know, wearing a hat, we really like the big floppy hats, the kind that have the nice brim around them, because that protects your head from the sun directly beating on it. If it's raining, it can help keep the, the rain off of you. Um, and we like the ones that have like the vents around it to help the air to, to escape. Um, it also helps to keep ticks from, you know, kind of attaching to your, your head. So that's just a great reason right there to, to have some sort of hat, some um, sunscreen and uh, sunglasses. And I actually, I'm a big fan of sunglasses and have them most, most all the time. So um, you know, keeping those with you, even if you just have like a cheap pair of sunglasses you got at the dollar store, um, especially in the winter when it snows, um, that snow can get pretty bright and damage your eyes. Insulation. All right, so extra clothing. So I'm sitting outside right now, as you can tell, and it's about 90 degrees and very humid. So the idea of carrying extra clothes right now, for me, not so appealing. Even with that said, though, um, I do carry some extra things with me year round. Now, how you pack your pack is going to differ depending on what kind of activity you're doing, what kind of hike you're doing, and the weather. So on a day like today, I'm not bringing the extra warm jacket, hats, and gloves. But what I might bring and, um, are a couple of things. And actually, before I show you, one of the things that I really like are dry bags. And a little secret here, you can get them at Walmart and you can get three for $10, all different sizes. They work just as good as the expensive ones. So you don't need to spend a lot of money. Everything that goes into my pack goes into a dry bag. That way, if it starts raining, I know that my stuff is going to stay dry. Um, so a lot of times I'll carry something, something like this. Um, this may be more for, I probably wouldn't carry quite so much in the summer, but depending on where I'm going, because some places in the summer you do need some extra stuff. Um, I almost always, though, carry a long sleeve shirt. And when you're hiking, you want to make sure that you're not wearing cotton, because cotton actually holds in the water. It doesn't keep you warm if it gets wet. So especially in the colder months, that can be deadly for you. So here I have a nice synthetic lightweight shirt that works perfect if I need just a quick extra layer. Another thing, and actually I'll carry this year round, dry socks. Um, you know, actually my last race that I was doing, my feet were wet for a really long time and ended up just hurting so bad. And I thankfully had an extra pair of socks and it was like, I felt like a whole new person with an extra pair of dry socks. All right, we also have, so certainly in the colder months, I'm gonna carry um, a pair of gloves. Um, all of these things I have used when I've been out hiking because you know it, sometimes it's just a little bit colder than you expect. Um, I might ca I also carry a bandana and then also a buff. And then if you're not sure what a buff is, it's like just one of those neck gaiters. We've been seeing a lot of these during COVID where people wear these as a face mask, but we can use these to go over our head. We can use it to go around our face. 
Um, I've actually used this as a makeshift sling before. So this can actually serve as a lot of different things for you. Okay. So those are some of the things that I would carry for extra clothing. And then also a lightweight rain jacket. Um, you know, if I know it's gonna rain, then I'll carry my, my heavier rain jacket on a day where they're really not calling for anything, I may carry this. And this is also good for wind. I have a feeling that soon I'm gonna probably need it while I'm doing this because it's starting to rain. I was hoping to get past that. Um, it looks like that's not to be. So um, I maybe have to slip on my, my rain jacket here. Okay, so next let's talk about fire. We need to be able to start a fire out in the woods in an emergency. So um, this is actually, right here is my 10 essential bag. So this has most of the stuff that, that I carry. I can just slide this into my pack. As you can see, it's on a waterproof container. Again, if this stuff gets wet, it's not gonna be any good to you. I mean, so you can put it in a Ziploc bag. Um, I'm pretty hard on my gear. So a Ziploc bag does not last very long for me. So something like this, a dry bag works great. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna start pulling some stuff out. Hopefully I can find it as, I, as I'm talking about it. So first we're gonna talk about fire. All right. Now this is pretty awkward. I don't have my fire stuff in my bag. Um, and this is a great teaching opportunity. Whenever you take something out of your bag, you need to replace it. So a lot of times I use my, my bag um, when I'm teaching my classes, I like to show the kids um, what I have in my bag and it looks like I took it out and don't have it. So, you know, that would actually be really difficult out in the wilderness because I have no other uh, um, things in my pack that would be able to start a fire. Um, what I do typically carry though is a spark light and the spark light is just a tiny little light that all it does is just spark. It doesn't actually create a flame. Um, and you use it with like some sort of tender, I use tender quick, or actually if you take a cotton ball and soak it in Vaseline, that's going to work um, really well for you. And so I keep that cotton ball and Vaseline in a little self-contained Ziploc bag. Um, and then that way I can use it to light a fire. I also, because I'm not always great at starting fires, will carry a lighter too. Um, and like I said, typically that would go in this bag here and one of the first things I'm going to do when I head out is make sure that I put that back in here. Okay, so next we have kind of some tools. Um, so for the tools that I carry, I pretty much always carry a pocket knife with me, um, and that just stays right in my, right in my pocket. Um, I also keep duct tape. And so, so some of the stuff that I keep may not necessarily be in, in my bag. This is actually stays in my pack here. I really like the little mini rolls of duct tape. Um, you can find something like this, nice and small. I can use this to repair gear. I can use it to you know, repair shoes. Uh, your shoe kind of has a blowout. You're, you can repair it. Um, your pack kind of falls apart a little bit. You know, this, can, this is actually one of the most valuable things that you can carry, um, especially for repairs and as far as like tools go. Um, and then you can also carry like a little multi-tool. Um, I've never really had any kind of need for a multi-tool um, except for maybe for my bike. Um, so that's not typically something that I would carry, but certainly, you know, a lot of people like carrying things like that. First aid. One of my favorite things, because that's what we, that's really what we focus on in emergency response training, is teaching wilderness first aid, standard first aid, and things like that. Um, so carrying, having good first aid supplies, and actually my first aid supplies, I keep in here. Now you can see, like this bag not only has like my first aid supplies, but it has my other 10 essential items. So you don't have to have a ton of things when you're going out on a trip to, to carry for first aid. We don't want you carrying a ton of things because the heavier your pack is, the more likely you are to become injured. So some of the things that I do carry, um, and I'll just pull them out. And actually, I'm gonna put in a little plug for wilderness first aid. If you don't know how to use these things, 
um, it's not going to do you a lot of good out in the wilderness. So taking a, a regular first aid class or even better, a wilderness first aid class, which will help you to learn how to use these things. So just with these supplies, like right here, you can see it's not a lot. You can do a ton of bandaging. You can do splinting. You can do, I mean, just lots of different things just with these. Now, if, again, if you don't have the training, you wouldn't know just how beneficial what this, you know, this stuff is. So things that I do typically carry for first aid and, you know, just basic stuff is some gloves. We always recommend two pairs of gloves. I keep one in my, my first aid kit and I actually keep one in my pack in my little hip pouch so that way I can get to them quickly. Um, we like roller gauze. These actually are really good for most anything. I mean, so I can use this for lots of different things. A couple of gauze pads, and we would use this for bleeding, cleaning out wounds and things like that. Some roller gauze to help hold these gauze pads on. This is a cravat, a triangular bandage, and we would use this for um, using it at, to attach a sling and swap for somebody who's broken an arm, attach splints, or even as a tourniquet. Um, of course, I have, I have lots of band-aids, things for blisters, and then also a couple of other things here that, that we recommend. Antiseptic towelettes. Um, we don't clean wounds with alcohol, so instead of using alcohol or alcohol wipes, we're gonna use an antiseptic wipe. Um, and then maybe a little bit of Neosporin or triple antibiotic ointment. So these are, that's kind of the basic on what I carry for first aid. You know, depending on what I'm doing, I'll carry more, um, you know, especially if I'm hiking with other people, I'll carry like a standard or traditional first aid kit. This is really to take care of myself, um, you know, when I'm racing. And a lot of times when you're racing, you fall, you get, <laughs> you might get a little bit bloody, um, you get up and you keep going. So I don't really need a lot when I'm out there. But the things that I do have will keep me, you know, be able to get me back to the starting point so that I can take care of myself properly. Okay, lights. So you're going out on a day hike. Who needs lights? What happens if you get stuck out there overnight? Um, you know, if you're injured or lost without any light, it can be kind of scary. Um, especially if you're not comfortable in the woods, but even if you are comfortable, it, it can be a little scary. So one of the things that I always carry in my pack is a, a headlamp. And again, guys, you don't need anything fancy. You can go to Walmart, the dollar store, Target, you know, and get something for like five or $10. And unless there's a, like you have a very specific need, that will do you just fine. Another thing that we carry, and this is especially good, something that we recommend for um, kids, but even for adults, and I carry one of these, are one of the 12 hour light sticks. The 12 hour light sticks, um, obviously they last 12 hours, so you don't wanna get the, the dollar store brand on this one because they're only going to last for a couple of hours. They're not very bright. These are actually very bright. Um, and if you have an emergency out in the woods, you know, let's say, you know, you get injured, I can leave my light stick with you and use my headlamp to go back and get help. So that way I have light as a rescuer and then you have light as you're sitting and waiting for, you know, somebody to come. If you fall asleep, the light still works. And even though these have expiration dates, a lot of times there's actually, I've never seen them not work unless they've already been pre-activated and you just activate by breaking them. Um, so I mentioned that, that we have these for kids. Everybody should be carrying a ten, their 10 essentials. If they get separated from you, if you're the one who's carrying all of the gear and your child gets separated from you and they don't have anything, they're not gonna be able to take care of themselves. So I have two, two girls and they've been hiking, they've been out on the trail since about a month old. Um, and as soon as they were able to start walking on their own, they had little packs and they had little bags that had they're 10 essentials and they knew how to use them. Um, and that's important too, you know, having a light stick, if they don't know how to turn, you know, to get it to work, isn't going to do them any good. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we would do is we would, I would go through their bags, show them what they had, things like light sticks, some basic first aid, 
an emergency blanket. And another thing that I like for kids is like a little stuffed animal. And the stuffed animal is their friend. And if something happens to them and they get lost, this way they don't feel like they're completely by themselves. Um, and then we would also keep put in like a little Capri Sun and a granola bar, and that was for emergencies. Um, so we would pack their regular snacks also, but they always had just like a little pencil bag that had all of those things in it. Okay, so let's move down to signaling. We need to be able to signal. We need to be able to get help if something happens. Um, cell phone. Uh, I have a lot of friends who will go out without a cell phone because they're like, oh, well, there's no signal. Sometimes there's a signal. Um, there's been times that I've had a signal that I'm like, wow, I had no idea that we would even have that. So the cell phone is beneficial in many different ways. One is that you may get a signal. Two, you can a lot of times send a text message uh, with only a very little signal. So you can maybe text somebody and say, you know, hey, we're in trouble. We need help. Um, and ideally, that would be the person that you left your itinerary with, another thing that you should be doing. Um, and you can, you can try that way. The other thing that everybody should be carrying, and I don't care, like, again, this is like, whether you're a kid, an adult, it doesn't make a difference, is a whistle. So I, here's my pack here. And actually, I keep my whistle right on my chest strap. And I keep it on a, a little bungee cord so that way I can access it no matter what is going on. Now, this pack and a lot of new packs actually have a whistle built into the chest strap. This whistle is not nearly as loud as this whistle. So if I am looking to get help, this is the whistle that I want. So when you're looking for a whistle, you want a hard plastic whistle, not the metal whistle. And you want it with no moving parts. So when I say no moving parts, if you shake it and you can hear something, that little ball on the inside, that's not a good whistle because that ball, which is called a P, when it gets wet, it doesn't work. This whistle, and I'm not gonna blow it because I don't wanna blow your eardrums out, but you can hear this for over a mile. So this is the type of whistle that I want you to have. Very common names for it might be a uh, Fox 40, a rescue howler, um, or a storm whistle. Those are things that you wanna look for. Now, a lot of times you have those um, survival whistles that have like the whistle and the compass and like all of this extra stuff. You just want a simple whistle. The extra stuff is not gonna be good quality. And we wanna make sure that, you know, when we're dealing with our safety that we are looking for quality. Okay. More signaling. The other thing I wanna show you is this. And this is a personal locator beacon. This is the Garmin Mini and Reach. Um, again, I do a lot of traveling. I do a lot of camping, backpacking, and there is no cell signal. Um, and what this does is it allows me to, in an emergency, I can hit the SOS button here, and it will send a signal using satellite to, to get a rescue for me. Um, the other benefit of this is that I can actually um, send messages, text messages, for instance, to my husband that, hey, I've made it to camp, we're safe. And when I tell him we've made it to camp, it actually sends my coordinates also. So he then knows where I'm staying that night. In the morning, I'll send another message like, hey, we made it through the night. Um, and so that way he knows I can communicate with him, just getting simple text messages back and forth. Or maybe, you know, hey, I've broken my leg. I don't need a rescue, but it's going to take me a long time to get out. So I can still, you know, that way I can, you know, maybe he can meet me at the trailhead if he's not hanging out with me for that adventure. Um, so this is just something to, to look at. One of the things that we talk about though, is that never do anything with this that you wouldn't do without. So, you know, you're not gonna say, hey, I'm gonna go on this epic hike today and it's okay, it's a little dangerous, but I have my personal locator beacon, it'll be okay. This is just a bonus. You need to always think that, hey, I need to be able to get myself out, you know, on my own, because that may be what it comes down to. Okay, getting close to the end, which is good because I think the rain is starting to make my, uh, my pretty drawing here run. 
Um, so let's talk about nutrition. So nutrition, um, you know, it can be something, you know, it can be pretty simple on the things that you carry, but you always want to carry a couple of extra, extra snacks. So, you know, some high, um, high calorie, high um, carbohydrate things, things that are specifically designed. I like these. Um, a lot of times, this is all I want, you know, just some, some squeezable applesauce. Um, you know, making sure that you have energy. And so um, something that you may want to also consider is just, you know, whether you use it or not, just like something like this, which is uh, what a lot of like runners and bikers use, uh, mountain bikers, because it's a quick boost of energy that actually will help keep you going. Um, and it's got some electrolytes in it to help replace some of the stuff that you're losing. Um, or even some electrolyte blocks. These are great in the summertime. They're good for kids also. Although if you're gonna give it to a kid, some of these do have caffeine in them. So with the caffeine ones, I would probably hold off giving that to the kids. Um, it's, rain, it's starting to rain pretty good here. So I'm gonna just close up my, my things because I don't want it to get mess, messed up there. Um, so with nutrition, um, you know, and again, like you, if you're hiking with kids, give them a little pack, let them carry their, their water, let them carry some, some snacks. Um, and so this is stuff that, that always kind of lives in my pack. If I am doing something longer, then I'll pack additional food. And then the final thing that I'd like to talk about with the 10 essentials is um, water. So we need to be able to, to, to have water. One of the biggest things I see that people, the, one of the mistakes is they underestimate the amount of water that they're going to need. Always carry more water than you need. And water is gonna be the heaviest thing in your pack. So it's kind of like, man, I don't really wanna carry that much water today, but we need to be safe. So um, you know, when you're carrying water, and when I'm hiking with my kids, I always carry an extra bottle of water because you know, in case they, they run out. If you're hiking with dogs, you need to be carrying extra water for them. Don't rely, you know, that there's going to be a water source for them. Always carry extra water for them too. I was just out in Ohio and we, all of our hikes were along streams. It's been so dry that the stream breads were like completely dry. And thankfully I brought my water in the bowl for the dogs um, and they were very happy for that. One of the things that I like are bladders. So you can see this goes right into my pack. The straw is long enough that it comes out. It actually kind of fits like this. And so I can actually drink while I'm hiking. So I don't need to stop. Um, Cause that's one of the reasons like people don't feel like stopping. So if you can drink while hiking, you're gonna help, you know, really stay hydrated. I use this while mountain biking also, because that way, again, I don't have to stop to hydrate. So I'm a lot more likely to stay hydrated. Um, Especially this summer has been brutal as far as temperatures, heat, humidity. So um, I always carry my Camelback as well as a water bottle that has my electrolytes in it. Um, one of the things that I really like is um, the liquid IV, and that's going to be it for, for more intense activity. Um, for regular activity, some like G2, the Gatorade with less sugar. You don't need the full strength Gatorade. Um, and just, you know, and a lot of times because, you know, a lot of people like the, the extra flavor and they're more willing to drink more. Um, I wouldn't put this in your Camelback because sometimes it is kind of hard to clean out. So these, the water bottles are a lot easier to clean. Another thing, a couple of other options that you have, something called Life Straw. And I can take this and go over to my little stream over there stick this end to the stream and just drink straight from the stream and it will actually filter out all of the bacteria from the stream and be safe for me to drink this is and this is super lightweight just stick it in for emergencies that way you know no matter what you'll be able to filter filter your water another thing that i have in my pack here are just the little um water purification tablets. These usually take about a half hour for the water to be safe to drink after putting in the tablet. So you just need to make sure that you read the directions. Um, I use this one because it has, um, it just requires one tab. 
there are some out there that require two tabs, so it's two bottles. Um, again, I like to minimize what I'm carrying, so you know I just may you know carry carry this. Um, you may want to take like some sort of flavoring with you, like a little packet of like Crystal Light or something like that, um, because sometimes the flavor on this is not fantastic. But certainly, if you you need water, you're going to to want to have this. Um, all right, so those, and that would be, that's your 10 essentials. It seems like a lot to carry, um, especially if you're just going on like a little day hike, but again, you can fit it, you know, everything you need into like a little bag like this. Um, I, you know, and, and again, it may seem excessive, but I carry one and my girls carry one. When we have friends that come hiking with us, I have, I mean, because I can, I have these, you know, a couple of them made up and we just slide them right into their pack. And I know that if they get injured, they'll be okay. And actually, as I'm sitting here talking, I realized that I forgot a big one. Um, and actually that would be our last one is our emergency blanket. So you're probably familiar with emergency blankets. A lot of times they are that that big silver sheet. Um, this one is actually a little bit nicer. It's orange on one side, silver on the other. With When it does have multiple, when it has two different colors, you're gonna want the silver side towards you. Um, this does make a big difference in retaining and creating heat. So for somebody who is going into shock or if we're dealing with hypothermia, having an emergency blanket is critical. I carry this year round and I have used this in the summertime for somebody who um, was going into shock. I was sweating, everybody else was sweating and this poor guy started shivering because he had a massive head injury from a um, mountain bike crash. So, um, you know, we can use this year round. Um, and so this, and it can also be used um, to protect you from the rain to use as a ground tarp, to use to um, create a shelter. So not just for, you know, we can use this for lots of different things, signaling a plane, lay it out flat. If they see like a big orange or silver rectangle, they're gonna know that that's where they need to be looking. Um, so I think that's everything. That's a lot. Um, and I'm happy if you wanna reach out to me, um, as, our email or our website is www.onthetrailfirstaid.com or you can do wfafrederick.com. Either one of them should get you to me. Um, and you can contact me, ask me questions. I can send you, um, you know, actually all of this in writing if you'd like. I can send you also contents of a good first aid kit. Also, again, we offer classes. Um, we offer them year round. We offer probably about six to eight classes a year. Our class sizes are small because we like to make sure that you guys learn exactly what you need to learn when you come out. So um, again, if you have any questions about anything I've gone over today, if you wanna you know, talk about classes, just contact me. My name is Selena DeBoer. I'm with Emergency Response Training. And again, I'd like to thank the Frederick County Public Library System for allowing us to um, help get the word out about being safe in the outdoors. So be safe out there, enjoy the outdoors, and hopefully I'll see you out on the trail. Bye.